watching CNC3. Good afternoon. Welcome to Saji Core GT Lessons on CNC3. I am Brendan Creed, a tutor from Elevate Ed Tutoring Services, and I'm your math teacher. In today's lesson, we'll be going through some shapes and solids, so let's have some fun with math. Let's go. Sajikor GTSE Lessons is brought to you by Sajikor. Wise financial thinking for life. Dairy Dairy the Milky Milk. Frito Lay Good Fun. Redux on Double Action Strength and Defenses. Keith Can Books, your partner in education and small talk. Alright, guys, let's go. Shapes and solids. Oh, in our everyday activities, we encounter many different shapes and combinations of solids that we can see in our, uh, in our daily interactions. So a shape, what is a shape? A shape is a plain figure that outlines an area. Shapes are made by connecting lines and or curves. So we have normal plain shapes, we have irregular shapes, we have combinations of shapes. Now all shapes, plain shapes that is, they have sides and vertices. What are those? A vertex is the corner of a shape or a solid and a side is a line that connects two vertices. So vertices, that's the, that is the plural of vertex. Now, what is a polygon? A polygon is a closed plane shape that is formed by three or more sides. For example, we have a triangle. Now a triangle is any three-sided polygon. So, with our triangle, we can have one side, two sides, and three sides. So this is our triangle, three sides and three corners, or vert vertices. A quadrilateral, this is a four-sided polygon. So we can have any four sides connected And this gives us a quadrilateral. A pentagon is a five-sided polygon. So we can have any five sides giving us a pentagon. A hexagon is a six-sided polygon. Here we have our pentagon with six sides, oh sorry, our hexagon with six sides. A heptagon is a seven-sided polygon, an octagon is an eight-sided polygon, a nonagon is what we call a nine-sided polygon, and lastly, a decagon is our ten-sided polygon. I didn't want to expose my drawing skills on the GT lessons today, so we'll do that another time. So next we have regular shapes. What is a regular shape? Regular shapes are shapes whose sides and angles are equal. So, for example, we have a regular triangle, which is an equilateral triangle. So, this is a triangle where all three sides are equal and all three angles are equal. Now, a regular quadrilateral is called a square. A square is a quadrilateral with four equal sides and four equal angles. We have regular pentagons, hexagons, heptagons, octagons, nonagons and decagons as well. So we can have regular polygons of all sides. Now small lines are usually drawn on sides to show that they are equal of equal length. So if we have a regular triangle or an equilateral triangle to show that they have an equal length, we may have a line on each side to indicate as such. Next we have irregular shapes. These are shapes whose sides and angles are not all equal. For example, we can have irregular pentagons or a, rectang or a rectangle. So we can have a four-sided figure where we have varying lengths for our sides and or angles. Now we have names for our irregular triangles, and this is how we describe them. We have an isosceles triangle. This is a three-sided polygon with two equal sides and two equal angles. 
So for isosceles triangle, we can have a triangle here where these two sides are equal and these two angles are equal. And we have a scalene triangle. This is a three-sided polygon with no equal sides or angles. So we just have three sides connected where none of our sides are, this, of, are of the same length and none of our angles are of the same magnitude or size. When we come back, we'll go through our irregular quadrilaterals and how we describe them. Insurance doesn't have to be complicated. Give us a call today. Tell me something, Teresa. Was it also part of your plan to seduce your boss into marrying you? You can think whatever you like, Mariano. Don't miss Teresa. Tuesdays at 8 p.m. only on CNC3. COVID-19 is on everyone's mind. What is the virus about? Why is it spreading so quickly? What can you do to prevent it? This is a serious virus and only we can help prevent it from spreading. Find out how and more tips on flattening the curve on Ask the Doctor every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. We will answer your questions live with our special guest, Dr. Joel Tiluxing. Ask the Doctor only on CNC3. Tune in to Passages, brought to you by Belgroves, on CNC3 Television, Monday to Friday at 8.20 a.m. and weekends at 10 a.m. Look out for us in your Daily Guardian newspapers and on the web at belgroves.com slash passages. Belgroves, celebrating life's precious memories since 1888. Guys, welcome back to Saji Core GT Lessons. I am Brendan Creed, a tutor from Elevate Ed Tutoring Services, and let's continue with our shapes and solids. So let's go through our irregular quadrilaterals. Now, as we said before, regular shapes or regular polygons, these are shapes where all our sides and angles are of equal length or magnitude. For irregular shapes, they have varying, varying lengths and or angles. So for our quadrilaterals, let's start with our rectangle. For a rectangle, we have four right angles, or 90 degree angles, and two sets of equal parallel sides. So we'd have parallel sides here on either side, and parallel sides at the top and bottom. And we have right angles for all our angles. So this is our rectangle. Next, we have a parallelogram. Now, a parallelogram has two sets of equal parallel sides and opposite angles are equal. So, it's almost as though we take our rectangle and we tilt it a bit. So, it's slanted. So, we have parallel sides on either side and parallel sides at the top and bottom. And opposite angles are equal. Next, we have a rhombus. Now, a rhombus has four equal sides. However, the opposite sides and uh, the oh, sorry, the rhombus has four equal sides. Opposite sides and angles are parallel, but we don't have four equal angles, which is why a rhombus is not a regular shape. 
So our rhombus is basically a parallelogram where all four sides are equal. Next we have a kite. Adjacent sides are equal in length. So how we have our kite, these two sides would be equal. And these two sides would be equal. We have one pair of equal angles and the next two angles are very unique. And lastly, we have our trapezium, where the only requirement is we have one pair of parallel sides. So you may see a trapezium where you have your parallel sides, and then two sides of equal length. Or you may also see a trapezium where we have right angles, But the only requirement is that we have one pair of parallel sides. So either of these are trapeziums. So let's continue with our lesson as we go into solids. What is a solid? A solid is a three-dimensional figure. Now, three dimensions meaning we have length, width, and height. So we can liken this to our dictionary here. where we have three dimensions. We have a length, a height, and a width, or they call it depth. Unlike, for instance, a thin piece of paper, which may just have two dimensions, where we just have a length and a width. The depth is basically the thickness of the paper, which is almost zero. Now a solid is made up of faces, edges, and vertices. What is a face? A face is a flat surface on a solid. So in comparison, our face would be our dictionary cover. An edge is where two faces meet. So our edge would be the edge of that cover. And the vertex is a point or corner where three or more faces meet. So that would simply be the pointy edge, the pointy corner here of our dictionary. And there are certain solids that we need to know. So here let's start with our cube. Now a cube is a solid where all sides are equal. So we have our shape, and on the right side, we have what we call the net of the cube. Now what is a net? A net is a two-dimensional representation of what all our faces on our solid look like. Looks like, sorry. All our faces are represented in a two-dimensional diagram, and we can then fold these shapes, sorry, these faces, to develop our, our solid. Next we have a cuboid. Our cuboid is made up of a series of rectangles and or squares. And these can be combined and folded to make our cuboid. Next we have a cylinder, which is made up of two circles and a rectangle. And when we come back, we'll be going through the rest of our solids as we continue our lessons on shapes and solids.
a delicious milk beverage filled with energy and nutrients for growing children of all ages. Grow them up with Smalta. I wish you everything this world has to offer. Let your heart soar and you will discover. I'll make the world what I want it to be. A better tomorrow is waiting you to fill up one possibility. Dearly, dearly, the milky milk. At this point in time, I really like the Spanish section. I'm glad I like it, mm, like to know everything, what is going on with us. Also, I think the editorials, I think they're doing a good job and they're speaking in truth. And, you know, they, they're challenging the government to, to make things better. Me in particular, of recently, the last two, three months, I've been reading the garden. I'm seeing a lot of news about the neighborhoods and the communities. And I even saw my community featured, and I was proud. Oh, the Guardian. The Guardian. Guardian. The Guardian. The Guardian. The Guardian. The Guardian. The Guardian. The Guardian. Well, not Guardian. The Guardian is my first choice. Tune in to Passages, brought to you by Belgroves, on CNC3 Television, Monday to Friday at 8.20 a.m. and weekends at 10 a.m. Look out for us in your daily Guardian newspapers and on the web at belgroves.com slash passages. Belgroves, celebrating life's precious memories since 1888. Hi guys, welcome back to Saji Core GT Lessons. I am Brendan Creed and let's continue with our lesson on shapes and solids. Last thing we did, we went through some of our solids and some of the nets of these solids. What is a net again? A net is a two-dimensional representation of, our sh of our, the faces of our shape or solids that can be folded to develop our solid. So next we have a cone cone is made up of a circle and a triangle with a curved third side that can wrap around the circle. Next we have a triangular prism. Now a prism is another word to represent one of our solids. And we have two triangles for two faces and we have three rectangles. Next, we have a square based pyramid, a triangular pyramid. Now, with our solids, we need to establish a few things. How many faces, edges, and vertices we have on our shape. So let's go, let's look at the cube again. Now our cube has one face on top, face below would be number two, Face to the left would be number three. Face to the right would be number four. And we have a face to the back and a face to the front. So we have six faces. How many edges do we have? We have four in front. That's our first square. Four at the back. We have two more on top and two more below. So we have 12 edges and then lastly we have three four five six seven eight we have eight vertices and let's do the same for our cuboid now the cube our cuboid is simply a varied cube. A cube is a cuboid, but a cuboid is not a cube. So we would have the same number of faces, the same number of edges, as well as the same number of vertices. So we'd have six faces, twelve edges, and eight vertices. Our cylinder, we have three faces, we 
Now we can't really count edges on our cylinder as we as we would with our cube and cuboid, seeing that we have curved sides or curved parts of our surface. But we have three faces, we don't have any vertices. Our cone simply has two faces, as you can see from our net. The triangular prism, we have one, two, three, four, five. We have five faces. How many edges do we have? We have three in front, three in the back, so that's four, five, six. We have seven here on top, eight on this side, and nine on the other side. So we have nine edges. And how many vertices do we have? We have a triangle in front, so that gives us three vertices, and a triangle at the back giving us three more. Three plus three is six, so we have six vertices. Our square base pyramid, we have one, two, three, four, five faces. How many edges do we have? We have one edge, two, three, four, and at the base we have five, six, seven, and eight. We have eight edges. And how many vertices do we have? We have one on top two, three, four, and five. So we have five vertices. And lastly, we have our triangular pyramid, where we have one, two, three, four faces. Let's count our edges. We have one, two, three at the front, four, five, and the last one at the back, six. So we have six edges. And lastly, let's count our vertices, where we have one, two, three, four vertices. So on our questions, we can be asked to draw a solid with six faces and all equal sides. And we should be able to tell whether it's a cube, a cuboid, a cylinder. And knowing our nets would really help us in developing our solids. So next, what is a cross section? A cross section is a slice, any slice, through a solid figure, and that is our cross section. For instance, if you wanted the cross section of a cube, so let's draw a cube. If I were to take a knife, and slice my cube through here. When I slice it, the face I would see is simply a square. And that would be my cross section. Now certain shapes have even cross sections, meaning they have the same cross section throughout the shape. So one of those would be the cube. No matter where you slice the cube, you'll have the same cross section throughout, so there's a uniform cross section. Also, 
A cuboid would have a uniform cross section. A cylinder would also have a uniform cross section. So when you slice your cylinder, what you would see is a circle. When we come back, we'll have some questions on shapes and solids. We'll be back shortly. Life moves fast. Be prepared with Sagicor. Learn more at sagicorlife.com. Get the nation's leading newspaper on the go by downloading the Digital Guardian app on your iOS or Android devices now and enjoy our special introductory subscription offer now on. The nation's first and best digital paper in an easy-to-read digital format. The Digital Guardian, Trinidad and Tobago's fastest-growing, most subscribed, and most read digital paper. Stay on top with the market leader and don't miss a beat in today's fast-paced world. Go to Apple Store or Google Play and download now. At this point in time, I really like the Spanish section. I'm glad I like it, mm, like to know everything, what is going on with us. Also, I think the editorials, I think they're doing a good job and they're speaking in truth and, you know, they, they're challenging the government to, to make things better. Me in particular, of recently, the last two, three months, I've been reading the garden. I'm seeing a lot of news about the neighborhoods and the community. And I even saw my community featured and I was proud. Oh, the Guardian. 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 The Guardian is my first choice. COVID-19 is on everyone's mind. What is the virus about? Why is it spreading so quickly? What can you do to prevent it? This is a serious virus and only we can help prevent it from spreading. Find out how and more tips on flattening the curve on Ask the Doctor every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. We will answer your questions live with our special guest, Dr. Joel Tiluxing. Ask the Doctor only on CNC3. Good afternoon guys, welcome back to Saji Core GT Lessons. I am Brendan Creed and let's continue with our lesson on shapes and solids. Now we have a question here. It asks, how many right angles are there all together on the faces of a cube? Now when we look at this question, we need to know what our cube looks like, what is a right angle and how many there would be on the faces of a cube. I'll give you guys a minute or so to digest the question. Remember, a cube is made up of six square faces. So, when we have a square, all sides are equal and all angles are equal. And we have four right angles. So if we have four right angles on one face, we ask how many faces
does our cube have? And our cube has six faces. So if each face has four right angles, the cube itself would have six faces by four right angles. giving it a total of 24 right angles on the faces of the cube. So in this question, we had to know how many faces our, our solid had and how many right angles on each face. Let's look at the next question. Which of the following shapes is a rhombus? Now, we have to ask ourselves, what is a rhombus? So a rhombus is a four-sided figure or a quadrilateral it has four equal sides and we have two pairs of parallel sides. Now when we look at our figures here, C has no parallel sides. So it's not C. When we look at B, B has two pairs of parallel sides, but the vertical sides here are not equal in length to the sides at the top and below. When we look at A, we have two sets of parallel sides and all the sides have the same length. So our answer is A. Sorry, let's call it shape A. Shape A is a rhombus. So let's look at our next question. So we have triangular shaped tiles of equal sizes we use to cover the hexagon. One tile is shown. How many tiles were used all together? Now we have to use our spatial awareness to try and solve this problem. They gave us one tile, and we have to see how many of these tiles can fit within our hexagon. So when we look at the center of the hexagon, they gave us one tile. But then we have this one tile in the center. We can also replicate this tile five more times.
to cover the middle of the hexagon. So this is one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now, we have dots along the edges of our hexagon. So we can connect these dots to make identical tiles. So this will be number seven, eight, and nine. Now, to save time, instead of drawing tiles on all the sides, along, the, along all the sides of our hexagon, we can note that along this one side of our hexagon, we have three tiles. And if we go to this next side here, we would have three tiles as well. So if we have three tiles, along all the edges, along all the sides, and our hexagon has six sides. We have three tiles on each side, by six sides, this would give us 18 tiles. And we have to add the tiles we have in the middle of the hexagon, which would be six tiles. And we have six tiles in the middle. So in total, we have 18 plus six giving us 24 tiles in total. Another way we could have done this, we could have filled half of the hexagon and then multiplied by two to get the total number of tiles. So we could have counted all the tiles in our top half and multiplied. Do you need assistance in having a prosthetic attachment? The Ministry of Social Development and Family Services can help. A general assistance grant for prosthetics can assist in you returning to your normal way of living and by extension, improve your quality of life. Before applying for this grant of $40,000, the Ministry of Health must do an assessment to determine if you need a prosthesis and will be able to use it. Requirements for the medical prosthetic grant includes the applicant's national ID card, evidence of address, quote from the provider, and the assessment from the Ministry of Health. For more info, visit www.social.gov.tt. This was a production of the Ministry of Communications, Information Division. Get the nation's leading newspaper on the go by downloading the Digital Guardian app on your iOS or Android devices now and enjoy our special introductory subscription offer now on the nation's first and best digital paper in an easy-to-read digital format. The Digital Guardian, Trinidad and Tobago's fastest-growing, most subscribed, and most read digital paper. Stay on top with the market leader and don't miss a beat in today's fast-paced world. Go to Apple Store or Google Play and download now. Make sure you have yourself a great investment week by viewing The Boss Report every Monday morning at 6.15 a.m. during CNC3's The Morning Brew. You'll get sound financial advice whether you're a new or experienced investor when you view The Boss Report, CNC3, covering your world. <laughs> Welcome back, guys, to Saji Core GT Lessons. I am Brendan Creed, and thanks for staying tuned in to our lesson today. In today's lesson, we've been going through shapes and solids, talking about what characteristics define them 
and make them different from each other, whether it be the number of sides, the number of parallel sides, number of faces, edges, or vertices that really and truly define our shape or solid. Now for the next question, they want us to look at the patterns involving the shapes that we have and determine what would, be, what would our sixth figure look like. So they ask how many dots would there be in the sixth image? Now, what do we do here? We are compiling triangles, one on top the next, or sorry, one next to the other. In our first image, we have one triangle and we have three dots. For our next image, we have two triangles. We have one, two, three, four dots. The third one, we have one, two, three, four, five. We have five dots. So, when we look at that, our fourth image, would have six dots, fifth would have seven dots, and lastly, the sixth image would have eight dots. So this was a simple question where we just had to realize how each shape was made, each figure I should say, and what we did regards adding the sides and dots to make each image. Now for our final question, it will require you guys to really analyze the shape given and see how the shape can be manipulated to give what they want us to find within the figure. Now we start with a hexagon, and the question is below. We have a regular hexagon, and they want us to draw two lines in the hexagon above connecting any two points so that three shapes are produced. Now this is a very wordy question, so you guys really need to take your time and analyze what the question asks. The shapes they want us to produce Number one, a quadrilateral with one pair of parallel sides. One. Two, a triangle in which two of its sides are equal in length. And three, a triangle in which all sides are of different lengths, but it has a right angle. I'll give you guys two minutes or so to look at the three shapes that they want you to produce. And after those two minutes, we'll go back to our hexagon above to interpret what they ask us and decide how we're going to solve this problem. All right, guys, let's interpret the shapes that they described that they want us to produce on our figure above. The first thing they ask for 
is a quadrilateral with one pair of parallel sides. Now, when you look at our quadrilaterals, the only one that has one pair of parallel sides is a trapezium. The second shape, a triangle in which two of its sides are equal in length. So they want an isosceles triangle. And lastly, they want a triangle in which all sides are of different length, lengths, but it has a right angle. So they want a scalene triangle with the right angle. Now this is what they want, but they want us to produce this on the regular hexagon above. But they want us to only use two lines going from point to point. They want us to connect points and create, recreate those three shapes. So let's write that above. They want one a trapezium. Two, an isosceles triangle. And three, a scalene triangle with a right angle. Now, to create our trapezium, there's only one way we could realistically create a trapezium in a hexagon. And that's drawing a line straight across the middle, whether it be from E to B or from A to D. So we have our one pair of parallel sides, A to F and B to E. So this is shape number one. Now, remember we have one line left to create shapes two and three. So within the other half of the hexagon, we have to draw a line that creates an isosceles triangle and a scalene triangle with a right angle. So we have to think about how we can create a right angle within the other half of this figure. Well, how about we drop a line from B and go straight down to D. So. Now because this is a regular hexagon, lines BC and CD are of the same length. So this creates our isosceles triangle. And lastly, number three, they ask for a scaling triangle with a right angle. So we have our right angle between the line ED and BD, and all three lines of different length. So this creates our scaling triangle with the right angle in it. So this was a question asking you to interpret the three different shapes they wanted and being able to dissect or cut our shape using the two lines to create the three shapes asked. Guys, it's been a pleasure teaching you guys on Saji Core GT lessons today. I hope you guys tune in for tomorrow's lesson. Have a nice day. Sajikor GTSE Lessons is brought to you by Sajikor, wise financial thinking for life. Dairy Dairy the Milky Milk, Frito Lay Good Fun, Redux on Double Action Strength and Defenses, Keith Can Books, your partner in education and small talk.